Welcome, Wonder School friends, to day seven of our virtual vacation. Today, we are visiting the continent and country of Australia. And Australia is really easy if you're putting a sti stickers in your passport because it's just one sticker today. And did you know that Australia is experiencing the opposite season that we are right now. So right now we're experiencing winter, but they're experiencing summer. And so Australians, a lot of them spend their Christmas on the beach because it's nice and warm. And that sounds really nice right about now. <laughs> I, I would like to be doing that. So um, let's get, let's uh, see what stories we're going to be reading today. We have Emu and Diary of a Wombat, Edwina the Emu, we have a lot of animal stories today, and we also have this one called Ready to Dream. Okay, and now I want to know what kind of food you would like to try for lunch from Australia and what kind of animal you would most like to see. So Australia has some really fun foods uh, to try. We have bacon and egg pie, damper bread, fairy bread, or Vegemite on toast. And uh, we have for our animals, kangaroo, koala, Tasmanian devil, and a wombat. So what animal would you like to see? And what food would you like to try? And I am going to reveal my selections at the end of this video, and we can see if we pick the same things. All right, let's get into our stories. Ready to Dream by Donna Jo Napoli and Elena Furrow, illustrated by Bronwyn Bancroft. Allie is so excited to be going on a trip with her mother and she can't wait to draw all the new animals that she'll see. When she arrives in Australia, she meets Pauline, an Aboriginal artist. The two soon become friends and Pauline shows Ali that art isn't always made with paints and paper and that sometimes mistakes lead to the greatest discoveries. Ali jumped along as they boarded the plane. Mama was taking her all the way to Australia. She held her backpack tight. Inside it, her crayons, colored pencils, paints, brushes, and lots of paper were safely tucked. The airplane ride took a day and a night. Allie drew the ocean and the clouds. Alice Springs, a town in the center of Australia, would be their home for a whole month. When they arrived, Allie told their taxi driver she was an artist. He pointed to an old woman on a bench and said she was an artist too. Can I go talk to her? Allie asked Mama. Sure, but don't be a bother. Allie smiled at the woman. We flew here in a plane. Want to see? The woman looked at Allie's picture for a long time. I like the brown clouds. <laughs> that was an accident. The plane shook and messed it up. The woman reached down, scooped a 
handful of brown sand and poured it into Allie's palm. When a storm blows sand into the sky, the earth dreams brown. Sand whirled into the air, into the air and burned Allie's eyes. Was she in a sandstorm? My name's Allie. What's yours? Pauline. That week, Mama and Allie took a riverboat up north. Allie wanted to use brown sand instead of paint for color. All she found was gray mud, but the sunlight made her pictures glisten. Back in Alice Springs, Allie saw Pauline again. I saw fruit bats, Allie said, and dingoes and crocodiles. Pauline touched the corner of the picture. Nice ragged edge. Allie wrinkled her nose. It got caught on the zipper of my backpack. Crocodiles dream strong. Their teeth chomp and tear. Maybe you should bite off the other three corners. Allie tapped her fingertip on, the, on that ripped corner. Ouch! <laughs> Did it give her a nip? The next week, Allie and Mama took a trip to the desert. Allie looked for something strong to paint on, something as strong as crocodile teeth. When they returned, Allie found Pauline walking along the roadside. I saw gallas and a bandicoot and kangaroos. She took a rock out of her pocket and handed it to Pauline. That's a kangaroo. I painted other rocks too, but they fell through a hole in my backpack and bounced all the way down a ravine. They're lost. Down a ravine? That's good. Kangaroos dream free. Pauline gave back the rock. Throw this furry one so he can hop free too. The rock seemed to jump in Allie's hand. She threw it high and watched it bounce away. Was that fur moving in the wind? The third week, Mama took Allie on a train ride south. This time, Allie touched rocks and leaves and branches, and she gathered furry bits of eucalyptus bark. When Allie returned, Pauline was leaning against a wall, looking out over the desert. I saw fairy penguins and a duck-billed platypus and koalas. See my koala? Pauline petted the koala. No accidents this time? No, but my painting keeps curling. Pauline put her hands to Allie's cheeks. Koalas dream in warm balls in the crooks of trees. Let it curl. Allie let go of the corners, and the bark curled up in her hands. Was this koala sleeping? As they drove east on their final trip of the summer, Allie looked for something warm to paint on. She ran to find Pauline when they got back. I saw wombats and possums and rainbow lorikeets. Look! Allie flapped her arms. See the lorikeet feathers? Crocodiles bite, kangaroos bounce, koalas curl, said Pauline. Every picture has a story to tell. Let the lorikeet dream its story. Allie closed her eyes. Her arms seemed to rise on their own as she circled the tree. Was she flying? The next day, Allie explored all on her own. She thought, saw a thorny devil 
and ants and a goanna. She walked in a wide arc around a snake. Then she lay on the sand and looked up as the night stars came out. In the morning, she visited Pauline. I saw so many things. Did you paint them? No, but I can show you. Allie sat down and drew a giant goanna with her finger in the sand. Pauline joined her, adding dots all around. A sudden wind came up and blew away their drawing. Allie laughed. Our pictures everywhere. Pauline smiled. Now you're ready to dream. Edwina the Emu by Sheena Knowles and Rod Clement There once were two emus who lived in the zoo. One was Edwina, and Edward was two. They played every day, there was never a fight, and they cuddled up close to keep warm every night. As they sat there one day, entwining their legs, Edwina announced she'd laid ten little eggs. shouted Edward. He seemed to be choking. Ten little emus? You've got to be joking. I'm not, said Edwina. But don't get depressed. I'll look for a job. You stay on the nest. An ad in the paper said, Dance the ballet. If you've got the legs, we're willing to pay. Great, said Edwina. That would be fine. I'll hop on a bus and I'll be there at nine. The director called out for the next ballerina and onto the stage stepped the lovely Edwina. She whirled and she waltzed, she twirled and she leapt. Then she twisted her legs in a grand pirouette. The man shouted. He seemed to be choking. And emu dance ballet? Oh, you've got to be choking. I'm not, said Edwina. But don't laugh at me. I'll find the right job soon. You just wait and see. An ad in the paper said, Chimney to sweep. Stick your neck out. You could make a heap. I will, said Edwina. Now this will be fun. I'll hop on a bus and I'll be there by one. Up on the roof, the wind whistled about. I'm ready, the lady below shouted out. I'll be just a minute, Edwina called back. Then she pushed till she popped through bristled and black. Yeek, said the lady. She seemed to be choking. <gasps> An emu chimney? Sweet chimneys? Oh, you've got to be joking. I'm not, said Edwina. But don't laugh at me. I'll find the right job soon. You just wait and see. An ad in the paper said, Waiter required. If you're quick on your feet, you're sure to be hired. Yes, said Edwina. That's perfect for me. I'll hop on a bus and I'll be there by three.
Edwina served tea to a man in a hat. Would you like me to bring you a meal with that? Yes, said the man. I'll have sausages fried with a couple of nice runny eggs on the side. Yeek, said Edwina. She seemed to be choking. You want to eat eggs? You've got to be joking. I'm not, said the man. Eating eggs is the best. Once I ate ten of them straight from a nest. Edwina ran out. She ran into the street. It was true when she said she was quick on her feet. Taxi, she cried. Take me home. Make it fast. I know what the right job for me is. At last. It was late when Edwina got back to the nest. You're late, muttered Edward, and I need a rest. You're right, said Edwina. From now on, we share. I'll sit on the nest. You pull up a chair. There once were twelve emus who lived in the zoo. One was Edwina, and Edward was two. Then Fluffy and Scruffy and Sniffly Sneeze, and Fatty and Footloose, and Knobbly Knees, and Lollipop Legs, and Shortening and Squeak, and the last little emu? They called that one Diary of a Wombat by Jackie French Illustrated by Bruce Watley A wombat is an Australian animal that looks a little like a bear, but smaller. Its favorite pastimes are digging holes, eating, and sleeping. In this book, a wombat tells its own story about, guess what? digging holes, eating, and sleeping, and of course, training its new neighbors, humans. I'm a wombat. I live in Australia. As you can see from my picture, I look a little like a bear, but smaller. I live in a hole in the ground, I come out mostly at night, and during the day, I sleep. I eat grass and roots, and of course, the occasional treat. Monday, morning, slept. Afternoon, slept. Evening, ate grass, scratched. Night, ate grass. Slept. Tuesday. Morning. Slept. Afternoon. Slept. Evening. Ate grass. Night. Ate grass. Decided grass is boring. Scratched. Hard to reach the itchy bits. Slept. Wednesday. Morning. Slept. Afternoon. Mild, cloudy day. I have new neighbors. Humans. Found the perfect dust bath. Uh-oh. Discovered flat, hairy creature invading my territory. What is this flat, hairy creature, guys? It's a doormat. Fought major battle with flat, hairy creature. One battle. Neighbors should be pleased. Demanded a reward. Received a carrot. It was delicious. Evening. Demanded more carrots. No response. Chewed 
pinhole in door. For Pete's sake, give her some carrots! Eight carrots, scratched, went to sleep. Thursday, morning, slept. Afternoon, discovered the perfect scratching post. Evening, demanded carrots. No response. Tried yesterday's hole. Curiously resistant to my paws. Oh, they boarded it up. Banged on large metal object till carrots appeared. Eight carrots. Began new hole in soft dirt. Went to sleep. Uh-oh, what is she doing here? Mm -mm. Friday. Morning slept. Afternoon discovered new scratching post. Also discovered a new source of carrots. Evening, someone has filled in my new hole. Soon dug it out again. Night, worked on hole. Saturday, Morning, moved into new hole. Afternoon, rained. New hole filled up with water. Moved back into old hole. Evening, discovered even more carrots. Never knew there were so many carrots in the world. Carrots delicious. Night, finished carrots. Slept. Sunday, morning, slept, afternoon, slept, evening, slept, night, was offered carrots at the back door. Decided carrots are boring, chewed a few things, didn't like any of them, demanded something other than carrots, received bowl of oats, ate oats. Monday morning, slept. Afternoon, felt energetic. Wet things flapped against my nose on my way to the back door. Got rid of them. Demanded oats and carrots. Only had to bang large metal object for a short time before they appeared. Evening have decided that humans are easily trained and make quite good pets. Night. Dug new hole to be closer to them. Slept. The end. by Anika Dunkley and Brian Wan. One day, in a little town not so far away, a platypus egg was found and brought to the local zoo. Zoo. But suddenly, oh no, his tire hit a rock. And then, oh no, look, it's flying out of the basket. The egg rolled and rolled and rolled until crack. Pop! Ee! squealed the pig. Moo! bellowed the cow. Emu, announced the platypus a moment later. He's an emu, of course, said the horse. 
What's an emu doing here? asked the owl. He's very far away from home. Farm, lots of water, Australia, home of emu. He should take a bus, suggested the chicken. At the very least, confirmed the owl. So emu, the emu, who was actually a platypus, set off on his journey to Australia, land of the emu. Home to E. Moo. And there he is at the bus stop. E. Moo took a bus. Where is he on the bus? Do you see him? Oh, he's right there. Followed by a train. Do you see him on the train? He's right there. Then a ferry. What's he doing on the ferry? He's fishing. Then a moped. Then a rickshaw. And finally, an airplane. Until at last, Emu arrived in Australia. stood waiting for a cab, along bounced a kangaroo. How you going? The kangaroo greeted Emu. Emu, replied Emu. You want to see the emus? Hop in, young fella. I'll take you there myself. Just then, a kookaburra flew by overhead. Hello down there, he called. Where are you off to? Emus, the kangaroo called back. This little fella's looking for emus. Oh, that's just where I'm headed. I'll take him the rest of the way. Up, up, up went Emu and the kookaburra. But Emu was way too heavy. Down, down, down went Emu. But, as luck would have it, he was dropped right into an emu farm below. Emu farm. Well, hello. Who might you be? asked one of the emus. Emu, declared Emu, ready to receive all his hugs. Yes, I'm an emu. But what are you? asked the emu. Emu looked around and suddenly noticed he didn't look anything at all like an emu. Emu's eyes began to well up with tears. He had taken a bus, train, ferry, moped, rickshaw, airplane, kangaroo, and kookaburra, only to find out that he didn't belong here after all. He had traveled all this way for nothing. Now just hold on a minute, piped up a koala who had been listening to everything in a nearby eucalyptus tree. I think I have an idea. Hop on board and you'll see what I mean. The koala, with Emu on his back, walked a long, dusty path until they reached the edge of a stream. We've been looking everywhere for you, cried Emu's mother and father, running toward him with open arms. So Emu, the Emu, who was actually a platypus, from the little town not so far away, which as it turns out was quite far away, had taken a bus, train, ferry, moped, rickshaw, airplane, kangaroo, kookaburra, and koala to find home. 
But Emu realized something was missing. All his friends who helped him along the way. So he invited them for a visit. And this says, welcome. That's their home. Oh, that is a very long bicycle. Which seat would you like to ride on? This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, or this one, this one, or this one? <laughs> All right, did you like our stories today? There is a lot of funny ones. I enjoyed reading them. Uh, okay, so let's see. I'm going to reveal what I want to eat for lunch and let's see if it's the same thing as your choice. Hmm. And for my animal, For my food, I would really like to try bacon and egg pie. That sounds like a lot of fun to eat. And for my animal that I want to see is a Tasmanian devil. Um, they aren't very pretty looking, but I know that they make weird noises and I would like to hear those noises in person someday. Okay, and now, we are coming up on our last day of our vacation and we are going to be visiting the bottom of the world, the continent called Antarctica. So make sure that you have all your warm clothes packed because it is the coldest place on earth. <laughs> all right, I will see you tomorrow. Bye!